and they think JK is a three down back. They will develop JK into a three down back. It's just a matter of when. Top five running back. You're watching the Fantasy Football Show. Smitty. Take a lap. Okay, now that we've all had time to digest the rookie running back landing spots, what teams are thinking of their rookies, how they're talking about them, the offseason that's kind of unfolding in front of us, whether these rookies are going to absorb playbooks quickly, whether they'll even have a a chance to do that. Um, And I think it's time to now react a little bit and say, do we still feel the same way about a lot of these rookies? Is Clyde Edwards-Hilaire still my number one ranked rookie? Absolutely. Across the board, Redraft Dynasty. I do want to point this out because a lot of people keep hitting me up in DM saying, Smitty, I took your advice. You called the top five running back in the future. I took him at number seven overall in a Dynasty startup. You better be right about Clyde Edwards-Hilaire. You better be right. If you took Clyde Edwards Hilaire at seven, you're not listening to what I'm saying. You need to use ADP to your advantage. Do not take Clyde Edwards Hilaire any higher than you have to. In redraft, he's looking like a 3.01 overall pick, a maybe 2.12, maybe at the bookend picks in the second and third round, you take him with one of those. You don't need to take him any higher than that. If you should have to, if his ADP climbs that high, then we'll reassess it and talk about it. But don't go doing it. Don't go grabbing them at number 14 in a redraft league. Don't go grabbing them any higher than you have to in a dynasty. Now, I've seen him go at, at the first pick in the second round. I, I'm kind of okay with that, but I think that as ADP data is kind of coming out, he's falling further and further. So I think you need to make sure that you're taking them where you can take them. If you don't use my prediction to help guide you into making him a steal, on draft day, not a player that has to over deliver for you to even get your money back. I do firmly believe we could be looking at the next Maurice Jones Drew, which would be a top five running back, top one to five running back, but you have to protect yourself and draft the guy at a reasonable price. He's my clear number one. Nothing has changed. Clyde Edwards Hilaire, get him on his horse, get him on his horse early. This guy could be a thousand yard runner as a rookie. He could have 10 total touchdowns as a rookie. And I wouldn't be shocked if he caught 50 balls, 55 balls. He'll catch over 55 footballs in his sleep in this offense if he's starting 15, 16 games. Now the ongoing theme throughout all my videos for the last month, month and a half, is that all of these rookies could start off very slow. They'll absorb the offense very slowly. Learning how to pass, protect in a specific offense takes time. That's why Jonathan Taylor won't be shoved in as quickly as people think into that Colts lineup. And we'll talk about that in a minute. But even Clyde Edwards Hilaire could be slow moving out the gate. But guess what? He's dynamic enough, explosive enough. He can do a lot with a little. We can address this as we get closer to the season. But I think even at limited touches, you're going to want to start this guy as your flex. It's only a matter of time before he gets fully unleashed. And that still means there's tons of room for Damian Williams to get carries and keep Clyde Edwards Hilaire healthy. Don't think that Damian's just going to be completely phased out. This will be a good thing. We want Clyde Edwards Hilaire all over the field. That means there's a running back in the backfield and he's split out wide on the regular. My number two running back is is tough because you could look at it from two different angles. If you're looking at it purely from a dynasty perspective, then I'm going J.K. Dobbins because from a dynasty perspective he's in the best spot from a dynasty perspective he has the most talent he was my number one slash two overall ranked running back heading into the draft and his landing spot is ideal for the future now could he get sprinkled in and not forced into the lineup at any point this year for sure I mean Mark Ingram is no spring chicken but he's also not showing signs of complete decline yet and, and I think he could have one full year left, maybe a, a year and a half. He also could get hurt at 30 something years old and then open the door for JK. It'll be a clear path to a three down roll. So you could argue that Jonathan Taylor on the surface has a better shot at rookie numbers, but I think you could also argue that it's not that clear cut. Jonathan Taylor is guaranteed nothing more than J.K. Dobbins because Marlon Mack and Naeem Hines are very good pass catching backs and Rivers is fresh to this offense and is going to need to build rapport with everybody around him. The Colts may be like, hey, let's lean on some veteran leadership, especially in terms of Rivers throwing the football to the running back. We might not see much PPR production out of Jonathan Taylor all year, relatively speaking. And if he doesn't know the offense well enough, you know, absorbing it in this modified offseason, 
Maybe he splits carries at best for the first few weeks, maybe half of a year. We don't know. He can start week one and get all the first and second down work. We don't know. We're all guessing at this point. They're educated guesses. I mean, my, I feel like my opinion is, is strong. It's built off of uh, many years of watching these things unfold, but no one's ever seen this type of situation unfold, fortunately. So it's hard to really predict it. We're only guessing. It's coming from a place of guesswork. And my guess is that Jonathan Taylor won't be handed the keys to the starting lineup with Philip Rivers being fresh and new himself. But I will say this, we're expecting these rookies to potentially be slow moving out of the gate, right? But what people aren't factoring in is that veterans get hurt more than, than younger players. And with this offseason being an offseason where people are probably not staying in the best shape, they aren't getting the oversight they need. Veterans and older players might get hurt more often than ever before, which means that rookies could start slow, but rookies could finish very strong. We could have Taylor and Dobbins both firing on all cylinders down the stretch from weeks nine on. It's really, really possible. But give me JK in Dynasty, give me Taylor, maybe slightly in redraft only because he is likely looking on the surface at more work on first and second down, but every day I inch closer to just making Dobbins my number two across the board. I love the Ravens for, for JK. I think the Ravens are a really good fit. It's a young team with a bunch of young components and you mix in JK Dobbins and you have yourself a, a massively productive offense built around young pieces in Hollywood Brown, Lamar Jackson, and JK Dobbins. I love that trio. We're looking at a Super Bowl contending team for, for a decade. And they think JK is a three down back. They will develop JK into a three down back. It's just a matter of when. So you heard me talk about Taylor a ton already. I will just finish it with this in terms of ranking these top three. So Dynasty Dobbins is, is two, Taylor's three. In redraft, I might might make him more of like a tie, but Taylor's slight edge because he could be looking at maybe more touchdowns initially. But if Ingram gets hurt, JK is the number two running back even in redraft. I mean, it's just it comes down to Ingram staying healthy. But again, don't expect Mac and Hines to just hand over all the work to a rookie that has had no offseason to absorb things properly. Expectations need to be low for the rookies coming into week one, two, three. Taylor has some fumbling concerns as well. He could rectify that. You can't write somebody off from a body of work of college or their skill set they come into the NFL with. The deficiencies can't be improved upon. Of course they can. So Taylor has a really good shot at being a really good running back in this league. I just feel like JK has the ability to be more in the 5 to 12 overall range in fantasy football drafts one or two years from today edwards could be in the top one to five and taylor feels more around that like jacobs level right now and i, I think he stays there for his career i think taylor's probably never going to reach that number one number two number three overall consideration type pick that value range he'll be that guy that you take at the top of the second every year and produces really good running back numbers but i don't think he'll ever be that one top three top four top five overall pick JK and Edwards, I believe, could be that good. Now, I put Swift here, and I'm cautious about it because I think he, he's good at everything. I don't think he's great at any one thing. I think coming into the draft, I evaluated him right around 4-5 or five for running back. So his landing spot isn't didn't just drive him into this value. He's been sitting around this value heading into the draft. And the Lions, you could argue, oh, they need a running back. They're finally going to turn things around. There's a lot of changes going on in Detroit. It's not the same. You could argue that. I'm okay with that. And I'm not going to call anyone crazy for liking Swift here, even near three. And if you like him, trust your gut. I don't have that, like, oh, he's a total bust instinct. I don't have that. But I don't believe he's going to turn into what the, the Lions have been hoping to get at the running back position for decades now. I just don't think this is a bad situation to me. There's no history or track record of, of producing a good running back in this in this system and I know coaching changes and all that make people want to believe that that you know history could be changed and and these trends can be broken I get it and again trust your gut if it screams swift now I like him here and rank him here because everybody else is willing to give up a lot for him I traded uh swift for it was four first round picks from a guy that wanted a running back really bad in a, in a league, a dynasty league, a startup dynasty league where no one is, is valuing rookie picks all that much. So I scooped up a bunch of rookie picks in exchange for Swift. You can get a lot for him. And so I will draft him to trade him and barter him. That, that is no problem for me. And I'll do the same thing with number five acres in a second, but Swift, um, I'm on a wait and see type of approach until further notice.
Akers at number five, same thing. I, I draft him to trade him, and that's pretty much it. I don't believe in Akers. I don't believe in his game. I think he's got a lot of weaknesses that he needs to work on. And can you improve at the next level? Absolutely you can. But when you mix in all those concerns I have, those red flags, which include crossing his feet constantly, lowering his head and hitting people like literally with his head, not his shoulders and his head, literally uses his head over and over and over. An instinct I think is going to be really hard for him to break. And at the NFL level, these players are bigger, stronger, faster, and he's, it's going to lead to injury if he can't uh, rectify that right away. And I expect they will try. Uh, but he doesn't have the patience or vision that these other running backs have. I've watched all the film. You don't need to tell me you've seen it and that he does. I get it. You know, trust your gut. If Akers is your guy, I'm not going to stray you away. I'm wrong about things. This could be one of those things. So trust your gut on these rookies. There is a lot of guesswork here, a lot of gut instinct. And while I have 16 years of evidence of landing a lot of the bold predictions and predictions I have, there's still tons of things I miss. No expert's gonna be right even 75% of the time on big calls, on, on very, very questionable 50-50 uh, type situations. So please know that. Please know that I'm not saying I 100% know on any of this. I have a strong gut feeling that, that these top three running backs will do very well and I have a lesser gut feeling on these two right here Akers and Swift and a little bit lesser than these two on Taylor that's how fantasy works it's a big part gut instinct it's a big part historical data it's a big part of how you take in that information and the success you've had in the past evaluating that gut instinct against the data and the pattern recognition and your predictions and your analysis are only as good as you know your track record with it and and my gut instinct with rookie evaluation i think has been pretty good over the years uh you know ask people at sleeperu.com and they'll tell you that they've had some pretty good success with my rookie evaluations aj brown was my number one wide receiver ranked back in january and i think he's gonna have a top five to seven wide receiver season in 2020. Don't draft him there. Again, the point is to get value. The point is to dummy proof yourself against the bold predictions using ADP data. AJ Brown's going in the fourth round. Don't you dare take AJ Brown in, the, in round one and go, Smitty, you better be right. You said top five wide receiver season out of AJ Brown. I took him at number eight overall. Don't do that. Akers doesn't let plays develop. Akers doesn't have the vision that these other running backs have. He has good power. He's powered his way through. Uh, and created some very good stats at the college level, had in his defense a really bad QB situation and a lot of problems around him that he had to overcome. So you could factor that in and say, oh my God, you know, stop going at Akers. He had a lot to deal with and he did very well considering the situation. Yeah, I get that, but all of my concerns about him having vision and letting plays develop and reading defenses and letting the, the reads develop, mix that with the fact that I don't trust the Rams at all. Daryl Henderson has better film. Daryl Henderson was a better college running back. You could cite that he had a, a weaker competition. I get that, and I'm not going to argue with you on that. And if you think Daryl Henderson's going to suck because of that, I'm, I'm okay with that. You can think whatever you want. But all I know is they traded up to get Daryl Henderson, and they failed him. And no, Daryl Henderson didn't suck or have a bad year. He had 39 carries. Are you going to judge a guy off 39 poorly given carries where he didn't have the support he needed to survive and thrive? Stop saying Daryl Henderson had a bad year. Stop saying Daryl Henderson sucked. 39 carries. You can't say that. More yards per attempt than any running back in college football history in the 60 plus years they've been collecting data and stats at the NCAA level. 8.9 yards per carry in college. More 20 and 40 plus yard runs than anybody in the nation and 12 50 yard runs. And, and, and don't think I'm suggesting that he's a lock to do well here. Don't think for a second that I believe that the Rams know what they have in Daryl Henderson. I firmly believe they don't. I have people saying, Smitty, you might be right on this one, I think. And I tell them, I go back at them and say, I don't know that I'm gonna be right on this one. I'm not gonna agree with you that I'm gonna nail this one eventually. I firmly believe there is more than a 50% chance that the Rams screw Daryl Henderson again. But I feel like the same odds are staring Cam Akers in the face, and I feel bad. I have empathy for people that are feeling the same way about Cam Akers as I did Daryl Henderson last year. That's the real point and takeaway here. And Henderson, only because he could be had at virtually free value with all the upside, and all the risk doesn't matter because you're getting him practically free, He's the only player to draft in this situation, unless you can draft Akers and trade him away like I just did Swift and get, you know, multiple first round picks, then that's that's amazing. But I don't trust Akers and I, I'm okay if you do and you could be courteous in the comments and talk about why and I'm fine with that. Drop it.
I think Vaughn needs to be talked about more. I think he's walking into a really good situation. I trust no Tampa Bay Buck running backs. I think Tom Brady has done well uh, moving rookies along quickly if he needs to. I think Vaughn's got a really strong skill set, good film, and the situation just feels really good. Like, if he landed in a bad situation, I probably wouldn't be talking about Vaughn much. But he is in a good situation. I like him a lot heading into 2020 in redraft at like really, really cheap value. You can get him past flex value. And in Dynasty, if he falls into a range where people are taking like wide receivers that are not a lock by any means, or the third or second best quarterback off the board, and you have a shot at a running back that could potentially be a three down back in that Buccaneer offense. I don't know why people aren't more excited about Vaughn even more excited about Vaughn than Akers. Like, I, I feel like I get lambasted over talking about Vaughn over Akers, and I don't know why. Why is Akers a more attractive player than Vaughn in Dynasty or Redraft? I don't get it, especially Redraft. Explain to me. Be respectful to the community, but tell me below, politely, why is it not a good idea to consider Vaughn over Akers when Vaughn is maybe in a better spot, guys? He might be. I think he is. I want to do this. I want to rank Vaughn ahead of him. The only reason I don't is because you can trade Acres for more. I want everybody to know I quietly like Vaughn better, and you don't have to draft him higher. AJ Dillon is a very exciting option here, and let me tell you why. We're, again, going into a modified offseason, one where players, including veterans, are not going to be in the best shape. They don't have the oversight. They don't have the conditioning, the nutrition. Think about all those things I just said. Not one of them, all of them. Nutrition, working out, oversight, discipline, all of that is going to be lacking across the board at the NFL level. These rookies are used to it. It's fresh in their mind. Hard work is probably a little bit more fresh in their mind. And while they all, and I'm talking about rookies, might start off slow because they don't know their offenses, they haven't absorbed things properly, they all might be leaned on heavily in the second half of the 2020 NFL season because veterans are going to potentially get hurt. And what running back in the NFL has had trouble staying healthy every single year until last year when he was completely ripped and in the best shape of his life? The answer is Aaron Jones. Aaron Jones is said to be lazy. There's a lot of off-season reports year after year with that. For whatever reason, the Packers don't believe in him. When asked over and over, do you think Aaron Jones has proven he can handle the full workload? They come back with, uh, uh, we're going to draft somebody. We're going to want to spread the carries around. That's a constant reply from that Green Bay staff and organization when it comes to the workload of Aaron Jones. Then they draft this TD vulture named A.J. Dillon, who's got a bigger frame than Derrick Henry. So, out of all the running backs in the entire league, and, and I'm being presumptuous here, and I'm, I'm guessing, and I could be completely wrong. We could, we could find out tomorrow that Aaron Jones has been pulling trucks with his teeth. I'm going to assume that Aaron Jones isn't in the best shape of his life, that he's potentially, if I had to guess, and I am in the prediction business, I'd have to guess he's more along the lines of previous off seasons than he is last off season in terms of being healthy and ready to rumble. So I feel like Dylan's got this sneaky, good, crazy value in redraft and dynasty alike, where you've got an eight to 10 TD potential season out of a guy that, that, that is backing up a player that just had 19 TDs on the ground in 2019. I don't expect Green Bay to have 19 rushing touchdowns, especially to one player, but it is a TD friendly environment for a running back and this is a td vulture right here playing behind one of the most injury prone running backs that has proven year after year not able to stay healthy and he walks into a season we we kind of feel could be the most injury riddled season ever because of this coronavirus layoff aj dillon sneaky good value across the board and the final running back i want to talk about antonio gibson this guy is a wide receiver slash Running back, he's a slash. He's a he's like a, everyone calls him a Swiss Army knife. This guy has so much potential and upside, and they love him in Washington. This organization is talking about him having Christian McCaffrey type skill sets. Now that's crazy. I, I think that's a stretch, but just goes to show how much they like him to be saying crazy statements like that. I don't know if he'll ever develop into a running back. It's hard to find any running back that that wasn't a for sure locked and loaded running back coming out of college that turned into a successful. 
every down back at the NFL level. So Gibson's no lock. There's a lot of risk and red flags here, but I'd like him enough to say, put him on your roster, develop the guy on your roster and hope for the best because he is loaded with talent. He feels like a very safe eighth ranked running back. So these are my top eight running backs right now as of, of Mother's Day, uh, May 10th. Happy Mother's Day to everybody and happy Mother's Day to all the double daddies out there that are doing double time as mothers as well. We, we call you the double deuce and daddies. You're doing the double work and you're appreciated too. So happy Mother's Day for, for all you double deuce and daddies. Uh, okay, guys, if you have any questions you want to, to talk about these rankings, give me your rankings. Drop it in the comments. Subscribe, follow, get some. Make sure you get on over to my Discord, sleeperu.com slash Discord. Make sure you get over to sleeperu.com, period, and get the rankings and bold predictions and all the stuff that you're seeing here. I got rookie rankings, super rookie rankings, um, top 200s on across the board for rookie, dynasty, r- super rookie, redraft, you name it, uh, sleeperu.com. I'll have the links in the description below for the Discord, for that, for everything. And make sure you subscribe. Turn notifications on because when we go live, we get crazy. We mock draft. We even do leagues all the time where I just get on. I'm like, let's make a league. And we we start a real league. So you're missing out on that if you're not subscribed. Peace out. Happy Mother's Day. Top five running back. You're watching the Fantasy Football Show. Smitty. Take a laugh.